and welcome back to the Chronicles of Aguna. I'm your host, Harry Simu, as ever. And uh, on this preview edition, we'll be looking ahead to our trip to the cottage. That's Craven Cottage, where we will take on Slavisa Jokanovic's Fulham side, who currently sit 17th in the table with five Premier League points on the board. A uh, newly promoted side, and, and they've done some good business during the summer. And uh, many feel they'll survive. The start's not been ideal, but it's far from disastrous as well. I think you, you have to stress that. If I was a Fulham fan, I wouldn't be pressing the panic button just yet. Um, in terms of statistics, I've already told you where they sit in the table and, and how many points they've accrued. In terms of goals scored, they've got eight so far this season and they've conceded 16. Um so clearly defence is a bit of an issue at the moment. Average goal scored is 1.14 per match. Again, that's not great either, I guess. But, you know, they've got the likes of, of Mitrovic up top. Andre Schürrle has been particularly impressive since he's returned to the Premier League. And then you've got players like Vieto, of course, Sessegnon, who we know quite a bit about. Well, He's been highly touted in, in recent seasons as a, as a really good player and someone that we should look out for. Very young, mind you. Uh, but yeah, they, they've got players on paper. Uh, Seri with a fantastic goal earlier on in the season. Uh, I forget who that was against, but it was an absolute screamer uh, from, from outside the penalty area. Uh, other than that, you know, I'll be honest. I, I think that Arsenal will go to, to Fulham and pick up all three points. I'm not overly worried about this fixture. And that's not me being arrogant. It's just a game that I feel, given our current form and the level of quality we have within the squad, that we should win. Um, of course, we've got a trip to Baku in Azerbaijan before that to take on uh, Karabag. And that, and that takes place tonight at the time of recording. So that's a bit of a concern. Uh, it's a long trip. Not ideal before a Premier League game, especially a Premier League game that kicks off at 12 midday. That's never good for anyone, particularly when you're nursing a hangover. So, you know, again, not ideal, far from ideal. And, and Emery's taken quite a strong squad out to Azerbaijan. Only Ramsey, whose wife is is heavily pregnant and expecting a stay behind, along with Aubameyang uh, and anybody else who's injured. But yeah, so really strong team going out there not the the kind of trip you want ahead of a Premier League game, but it's no excuse in my opinion. I don't think we can use that as an excuse if we slip up at the weekend. I think Arsenal have started slow all season. So, you know, I, I don't see Sunday being any different. You know, the, the fact is that this is a, a big football club and, and we're going to have these problems. We're going to be travelling around Europe and we're going to be coming back and taking on Premier League opponents who particularly later on in the season, will be desperate for points. So th this is not an excuse. I'm not making any excuse. And to be honest, I put out a tweet yesterday where I basically said that I get it. I get that some of you wanted to see some of those players left at home. But let's be realistic. These boys aren't traveling on a Ryanair flight for five and a half hours. And not that there's anything wrong with Ryanair if you use them, just saying. Uh, but you know, it's a long flight and, and I'm sure Arsenal will travel in first class and with the utmost comfort uh, to ensure that the, there's as less jet lag as possible. Jet lag? Jet lag, I should say. Uh, as physically possible. So I'm not overly worried about that and I don't think we should be. I expect the team to line up as follows. I think Leno will be in goal based on the fact that checks out. I don't think we have any other choice. I wouldn't trust Martinez as a first choice goalkeeper at this point. And given what we spent on Leno and the fact that he's done okay when he's played, he's no doubt going to start for me. Then Bellerin will come in at right back, Monreal at left back. I think Socrates will come back into the team. Um, I think he's been impressive so far this season. I think Emery will be keen to get him back involved. And then it's a toss up, isn't it? Between Holding and Mustafi. Holding's impressed when he's coming, but I still having in the back of my mind that Emery's preferred pairing is is Socrates and Mustafi. So I think those two will make up the central defensive pair. Then if you move into the midfield, I think we'll stick with Xhaka and Torreira. Um, Ramsey, Ozil, Aubameyang, Lacazette. I think it'll be unchanged, to be honest. I think uh, Alex Iwobi has, 
has made it, uh, given a good account of himself and, and he's definitely knocking on the door of the first team, as is Danny Welbeck. But I think Unai Emery is, is keen to settle with an 11 and, and I think that will dictate his decision and, and we won't see much disruption to the team that just beat Watford. So my prediction for this Sunday's game is a 2-0 win to the Arsenal. I think we'll start slow again. I think the second half will we'll kick into life for a short period of time like we've seen in, in recent weeks and Arsenal will get two quick-fire goals and, and ultimately put the game to bed. But Fulham are dangerous opponents, make no mistake about that, not for a second writing them off. They've got some good players. They've got a manager who I believe is a good manager. Uh, I think he's been unfortunate in, in some of his previous roles. But, but you know, despite spending a lot of money, he's got a big job on his hands and, and things will be tough for Fulham this year, in my opinion. Uh, but my opinion is not all that valid when it comes to Fulham. And that's why I am joined on the line by Dom Betts of the Fulhamish podcast after this quick break to get the lowdown on our opponents. Enjoying what you've heard so far? If so, make sure you hit that subscribe button and leave us a review on iTunes. Joining me on the line is Dom Betts of the Fulhamish podcast to assist me in previewing this weekend's game. Dom, welcome to the Chronicles of Aguna. How you doing, mate? Yeah, not too bad, mate. Not too bad. How are you, mate? Not too bad. Not too bad. Busy week, but, you know, looking forward to another weekend of Premier League football. Of course, we've got some European football to enjoy in the meantime. But with Arsenal being in the Europa League and, and going to places like Carabag, it's, it's not that exciting, if I'm being honest. Um, Dom, Fulham, how have they got on so far this season? Tell us a little bit about your team and, and what we can sort of expect this weekend. So, uh, looking at the season so far, it's gone. It hasn't gone well. It hasn't gone badly. It's just gone okay so far. I think a lot of people are annoyed because of, we've lost quite a few games. We've seen quite a few goals, but that's going to happen when you sign twelve or players, spend a hundred million pound, which was needed because I think without Loney's last season, there was probably about twelve or thirteen sort of squad players or thirteen players in, that we had, and I think. People, yeah, we lost three months at Everton on the weekend, but we haven't got a point there in the league in 1959. It's like 22 consecutive wins for them or something stupid like that. It, the only games you can be really annoyed are possibly Palace at home, which we lost, and then Brighton away, which we, yes, we drew, which is a good point that we were tuning up. And I think the rest of the results are sort of expected. And I think for a promoted side, our aim really is just to stay in the league. I think because people saw how much money we spend, they're expecting us to maybe push up the top half like Wolves have done so far this season. But yeah, it's not been great, but it's not been bad particularly. I think it's just been average really so far. Yeah, I, I don't disagree with that. I had a quick look at your results this season, obviously prior to, to recording this. Um, I think you lost at Spurs and you lost at City, but they're, they're expected, as you said. You know, there aren't many teams that will go to either of those places. Uh, I say places, I don't say grounds because we don't know where Spurs are going to be playing. Uh, but, you know, there's not many teams that will go to any of the Etihad or wherever Spurs decide to pitch their tent uh, and get results. So I, I agree with you. I think it's very early um, to be panicking. I think a lot of money has been spent and, and so maybe the expectation was a little bit too high from the off. What can Arsenal expect, though, this weekend? How will Fulham likely set up? What's their sort of style like? Because, uh, you know, I'll be honest, I haven't watched much of Fulham this year. So I guess we, you, you, I guess we could play. You say you can play Arsenal-ish football. Like we, we like to have, we like to have possession of the ball. We're not going to be one of these promoted sides who comes back and just puts ten men behind the ball for the entire game. We're at home. We go to want to attack. We play either a four-three-three or a four-two-three-one. We've moved more into a four-two-three-one. So we have we have a back four with bombing wing, wing backs and centre backs who like to play the ball out from the back. So that's possibly someone where Lacazette and Aubameyang can sort of trouble us. Then we have two sort of players holding, which is usually going to be either Anguissa or Kevin McDonald, and then Jean Michel Seri. So you have Anguis and McDonald sort of holding, playing sort of marauding the back four, and if one of the centre backs push forward, they'll drop in. Then you have a creative player in Seri sort of spraying the ball, playing the best passes. He's obviously our best technical player. And then yeah, we have sort of two more inside forwards than wingers in uh, either Andre Scherler, Luciano Vieto or uh, Ryan Sessegnon with most likely Tom Candy coming in this weekend back from his injury in behind Mitrovic. So we like to have the ball. We like to get the ball out wide and we like to get the ball into Mitrovic because you know he can cause problems. And then Mitrovic, if he doesn't score himself, there's going to be plenty of players around him. So it's not going to be a game where I think Arsenal are going to have a 70% possession. I think, I think we're going to want to attack Arsenal from the off because that's the only thing we know how to do. We can't defend. So we, we, we <laughs> that don't makes the only thing we need. <laughs> yeah. When I, when I was looking at this game a couple of weeks ago, I said it could probably be, it could it will stay of both our defense 
defences could probably be 8-6. But I think we're looking at one area where we can possibly hurt Arsenal. It's one with Luciano Vieto making the runs in behind Hector Bellerin because obviously Bellerin likes to bomb forward and he's not the best defensively. And Luciano Vieto's got a bit of pace about him. He's also a very intelligent player. So I think he's going to be looking to get into those gaps. And also, I think Mitrovic is obviously going to cause your uh, defensive trouble. I think he's, what, the second top goal scorer in the league, joint with as many goals as Harry Kane. So he scored five goals this season. He's I think since he joined us in the end of January, no player in the top English four leagues has score more goals in him. So, yeah, he's going to be a threat. Yeah, interesting. And he definitely will be a threat. Definitely a player that we're looking at. You know, he's, he's, he's a bit of a nuisance, isn't he, for centre-halves? And that's something that traditionally has been a problem for Arsenal. Um, you mentioned Ryan Sessegnon there. Now, he's a player who's been spoken about plenty, even when Fulham were, were down in the championship linked with Tottenham quite a few times, uh, linked with other various clubs. How's he gotten on in the Premier League? Because, you know, he he came with a bit of a, ma- well, not a bit of a, a big reputation. And, and I haven't really seen, granted, I've only seen highlights, but I haven't really seen him take off and, and kick off for another level. Would you say that's fair? Yeah, I think it's a fair assessment. I also think we don't really know what where he's best suited in the Premier League because the football is so different to the Championship. His goals last season were, I think he scored one goal from outside the box. That, and that tells you everything. I think he's scored one goal from outside the box. You know, it was on his weak foot on like a Tuesday night in, against Sheffield United. So I think he, the chance he got last season were in around the five, six yard box and then and getting rebounds. And I think he's just not getting that those opportunities in the Premier League. So I think we're trying to work out how to how he best works in the Premier League, and I think he's slowly been embedding. And people are forgetting he only turned eighteen in May. Like he's, he's not exactly a seasoned professional or even a seasoned youngster. He still only just turned eighteen, so yeah. I think people have got to give him give him time to progress. And I think this season for him isn't about being the best player in Fulham. It's about him making himself a solid Premier League player, whether that's that left back, left wing back, or in behind a striker. And yeah, I think he's he's played fine. It's, it's not he's not exactly been terrible so far. And I think yeah, it's just he's just slowly sort of adapting to the Premier. League. Like, like any player who hadn't played in the league before would, even if they're coming from the championship or they're coming from abroad. Yeah, that's, that, that's absolutely right. Where would you say is his, his best position in your opinion? Because, you know, I, I've heard conflicting arguments. I've heard some people say left wing, some people say left back. What, in your personal opinion, Dom, where, where would you like to see him deployed? I like to see him play left wing just because he's, he's he's sort of he's very instinctive and he's a very intelligent player. He always seems to make the right run. So I think he's better further forward. But problem for him this this season really is we've got two players up there next to Mitrovic who are playing better him in Luciano Vieto and Andre Scherla, which is which is a problem for him. But for me, yeah, his best position is left back. You, I, I can see the happy medium being maybe in a three at the back system at left wing back because yes, he, he seems actually he's played a lot better defensively since he's got to the Premier League. So he still he Slav is still decided to play him there because he's clearly got the ability to play there because he played there when he was a youngster. So I think for me, his best position is sort of just off Alexander Mitrovic on the left hand side coming in on his left foot and putting sort of smashing it into the back of a net really. But like, cause he's not really a player who gets loads of assists. He's a player who sort of just, he got quite a lot of goals for us last season. So I still think left wing, but I think he's one of those players to be the most effective. He's got to be playing in a system that suits him as well. Yeah, of course. And when you play at left back and then, and you get forward, you seem to have a lot more freedom, don't you? Than when you're playing on the left wing, cause you're making that late run and often it's undetected. And I think, you know, there are some players who are probably better suited to starting from a deeper role. Um, I'm, I'm going to have a good look at Sessegnon at the weekend if he's to play and uh, and try and make a better assessment because, I, like I said, haven't seen a great deal. Um, Andre Scherler, what a signing he's been. I mean, I, I've seen some incredible highlights. He, he looks like he's really come back to England with a point to prove and, and Fulham fans must be pleased with that signing, no? Yeah, we're 100 percent we were pleased with the signing. I mean, if you're signing a World Cup winner, you're not really going to be going to be angry about it. And I think he's 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 a very different type of player we've had in in a lot of times. We've also had, we've often had wingers who just won't shoot and will try to do too much. I think a good example of that is one of our wingers who sort of come back in the side recently, Floyd Aite, and he tries to do score the perfect goal every time. Where Andre Scherler, all he wants to do is shoot. That's yeah. all he want. That's all he wants to do. Which isn't a bad thing in my opinion because I'd rather a player do that than try and score the perfect goal every time because if you look at a goal, the goal we scored against Watford the equaliser the, the chance that Vieto crosses across to Mitrovic comes from a shot that gets blocked by Andre Scherler so 
I think they, they may not necessarily create goals and clear chances, but then it just leads to the ball getting into advanced positions. And I think, yeah, he's been in a phenomenal signing. I think it's on a two-year loan deal. And so it's basically a signing, a permanent signing, if you think about it that way. I mean, two scenes is a, is a long time. And yeah, he's, he's been great so far. And I think he's only going to get better once he gets used to the team, the formation and the players around him. Yep. And just finally, Dom, what's your prediction for, for Sunday's game? It's an early kickoff. Uh, 12 o'clock noon, which isn't ideal, um, especially when it's an away game. But w- for us anyway, what, what are your thoughts, prediction? How do you see this one playing out? It's an interesting one. It's, uh, for me, it's whatever happens in the first half hour of the game. Because if we can either go ahead or just keep it nil-nil, I think we've got a good chance of getting a point out of this. But I said it, I said it at the start of the week. I think we can't really, we can't really expect to pick up anything from this game. For me, I don't, I'm not, I'm not really expecting anything. I've seen us beat Arsenal at home, yeah, like a couple of times, but I can't see us getting anything. I think you will come away with a three-one victory here. Just yes, you, obviously you're doing a lot of travelling and it's midday on a Sunday, which doesn't really help anyone. But I think you will, you will have the, the quality to get passes. For us, this isn't a game where we're looking to get something. If we get a point or in three, if we're extremely lucky, uh, it will be a bonus because we look after the international break and we've got Cardiff away. We've got Bournemouth at home and we've got Huddersfield away. And for them, that's where we need to get our points. That's we're looking some out of nine. So I'm going to say, I'm, if, I'll, if I go in my heart, I'll say two, two, but I think in my head is saying three, one to the Arsenal. Okay. Lovely. Dom, thank you very much for taking time out of your schedule to join me and, and to provide the Arsenal fans with some insight uh, into Fulham and, and how things are going so far this season. Uh, we can't thank you enough. And uh, do you want to just quickly tell our listeners how they can follow you on social media? Yeah, so if you want to follow Fulham FC, we're the, we're the independent voice of Fulham FC. We do a lot of video content. We do we have a, we have two podcasts coming out a week. That's at Fulhamish Pod, Fulhamish P O D. And you want to find me? I'm at Radio Bet. So it's R A D I O B E W T S. Lovely, Dom. Thank you very much, and uh, no doubt we'll see each other again very soon. Yeah, we will. <laughs> Take care, mate. Take care. That was the brilliant Dom Betts. Now, there's only one thing left to do on this preview show, given my prediction, given my predicted lineup. Spoken a little bit about our opponents. Now it's time to make my loser pool pick of the week. Now, don't forget the Chronicles of Aguna is sponsored by loserpool.com. It's a fantastic betting game that you can get involved in. You can play against your colleagues, your friends, or your family, depending on on who you wish to compete against and who you wish to have bragging rights over, I guess. Um, There is a special prize of a £1,000 coming up very, very soon, and that's in the £2 pool. Um, Stay tuned right till the end of the podcast. And as always, you can hear how Loser Pool works. Um, Looking at this weekend's Premier League fixtures... I've been trying to go with with the opponents of Arsenal of late and and it's been working. You know, I went with Newcastle, I went with Cardiff, uh, I went with Watford. Now looking at it, you know, it's a difficult one. I haven't fucked it up just yet, uh, to be honest. I'm still hanging on in there. I think this time I'm going to stray away from Arsenal's opponents and I'm going to go with, hmm, I'm looking at Huddersfield. They travel to Burnley um, and Burnley seem to have hit a bit of form of late. So maybe I'll go with with Huddersfield Town. Mm, you know what? I'm going to stick with Fulham. I'm going to go with the Arsenal opponent again. It's been working so far. Arsenal have been winning off the back of it. So let's uh, let's not stop the trend. So Fulham are this week's loser pool pick for me. Uh, don't forget, head over to loserpool.com, pick your own and get involved. We'll be back on Tuesday with episode 29. We'll be looking back on the Fulham and Carabag games and talking about any other big stories to come out of the woodwork concerning our beloved Arsenal. Uh, Don't forget to follow us on Twitter at Chronicles underscore AFC. Don't forget to subscribe on iTunes or wherever it is you listen from. And... Our podcasts are now available on YouTube, so please, please do head over and subscribe to our YouTube channel. All your comments, both uh, positive and negative, are well appreciated. And uh, I'll see you guys on Tuesday. Take care. Meet our hero. He's a smart guy who loves sports and loves outwitting other people. Our hero needs to show the world his mastery of the game. Our hero does this by playing games at Loserpool. Our hero is you. Loserpool has two games. In the namesake, the games of an entire season are grouped together into weeks or rounds. 
After paying an entry fee, you choose one team to lose that week or round. If you're correct, you earn the right to repeat the process in the next round. But the catch is that you cannot choose a team a second time until all the teams have been chosen by you once. If you're knocked out early, you may re-enter the same pool by paying a penalty to make it fair for the other players. Or you may wait until the next pool starts in a few weeks. Raise a pool is similar to lose a pool in that the games of an entire season are grouped together. But in this case, you pay the entry fee and predict the outcome of all the games in that week or round. You will be ranked against all other players according to your accuracy. And at the end of each round, a predetermined percentage of players will be eliminated. There is no option to buy back into a pool if you are eliminated, <laughs> and so you will have to wait until the next pool starts to play again. In both games, the prize money grows very rapidly. The pool is allocated to the last man standing, or to add a little drama, to a small surviving group if they vote according to predetermined rules. Lose a pool is about community, friendship, fun and rivalry. Discuss and debate the games and events of the week with players from around the world. Invite your friends and co-workers into your own sub-pools and see who can outsmart the group and earn bragging rights. This is your moment. Create an account. Show your sports genius. Be the hero.